Join me. And together, we can rule the galaxy. For many years now, I've been teaching Samsung Galaxy owners how to unlock the full potential of their devices. And if you've just picked up the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6, let's pause for a moment of silence and pay our respects to our wallets. The upside is now you have one of the most premium and powerful smartphones on the market. And in this Galaxy Z Fold 6 video, I will show you how to get your money's worth from your device. So this one's gonna be different from many of the other first things to do videos out there already. And if you stick around, you'll see what I mean. Number one, so I usually start these basic setup videos with housekeeping stuff, but for this one, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. First, let me show you some of the standout features that you can show off to your friends and family when they ask you what your phone does that theirs doesn't. Yes, I am looking at you iPhone owners. So here's a good example. Let's say the inevitable happens and you need to call in sick for work one day. And let's say you're not very good at making excuses. Well, don't worry, because now with the power of Samsung Galaxy AI, you will have all the excuses you will ever need on tap. Here's how to use it. Open your email app or a notepad and using the Samsung keyboard, hit the sparkling star icon. This is your AI icon and it appears everywhere on the device. So keep an eye out for it. Now hit Composer and choose the format and style and type in a brief explanation of what you're trying to write and then hit generate. Now you can just insert the text into an email or text message or simply read from it. And there you go. You now have the day of work. They bought it. You know I'm joking, but you can see the potential here with this tool when it comes to writing anything. So keep it in mind and remember it can be used in any app that allows for keyboard inputs. Okay, here's another eye-catching AI superpower. Let's say you're pretty good at drawing or maybe you have the vision but you lack the artistic skills to bring it to life. Well, now with the help of Galaxy AI, you do have the skills. Open the Samsung Notes app, it looks like this. Select the pen or brush tool and draw something. Hit the little sparkly star icon and highlight your drawing. Here you can select the style and then hit generate. Now, everything you can imagine is real. And let me know if you know where that quote comes from. Anyway, now with your newfound talent, you can create any image you want and you can download your art and even set it as your wallpaper or picture profile. And you could even sketch pictures of your friends. But why do that when you can do this? Open your photo gallery. Make sure it's this one that looks like this. Don't open the Google Photos by mistake because this one only works with the Samsung gallery. Now take a look at your photographs and find one that makes you laugh. There does need to be a clear face in the photo for this one to work. Once you've found it, hit the AI stars and you'll see this portrait studio. Here you can choose a style that you like and then hit generate. Now you have the perfect picture profile for yourself or your friends and you can attach these to the phone numbers in your phone book so that it will pop up whenever they call you. And just like the previous tip, you can save this to your gallery and use it however you want. Here's another little Samsung Galaxy AI magic trick. Perfect for you if you want your wallpapers to be genuinely unique and not just the same box standard ones that everybody uses. Pinch the home screen or hold your finger down on an empty space. Now go to wallpaper and style. Tap change wallpapers and go to create with AI and select the generative option. Now choose a theme that you like the look of and then hit next. On this page, you can change the words in the AI prompt to whatever suits your style. And now you can generate a truly unique wallpaper that you can call your own. Nice. Nice. Number five, let's say you have a wallpaper that you already like, so you didn't need to create one, but your friends use the same one. Here's a little trick to make it better than theirs. Pinch the home screen again, Go to wallpaper and style again. Go to change wallpapers and scroll down to the generative AI and go to ambient this time. This applies contextual weather graphics on top of your wallpaper based on your location. So with this enabled, you will know without even looking outside if it's raining or if it's snowing and maybe whether to use that AI trick to call in sick for work. Okay, so we will dive into some more fun and game-changing AI stuff in a little bit, but for now, let's run quickly through the necessary setup steps that you need to know to get started with your Z Fold 6 the right way. Starting with this, since your phone costs the same price as a decent second-hand car, it's probably worth spending a few quid on a decent case. And this is not a sponsor. It is, in fact, the type of case that I've been rocking on my Galaxy devices for many years now. This one here is from Thinborn. It's incredibly thin, but incredibly strong. It's aramid fiber, and it does have built-in magnets 
for magnetic accessories. And there are two parts to this case, the back and the front frame. With them both on, all corners are protected. But me personally, I like using just the back panel on its own with this particular phone. I do keep that cover frame handy if I know I'm gonna be throwing my phone in a bag and it's gonna get knocked about a bit. And I know what you're thinking, if you don't use the front frame, the front is not protected. Well, yes, that's true. But the good news is if you do buy one of these from Thinborn, they do throw in a couple of free tempered glass screen protectors just in case. So this is my case recommendation. If you want to check it out, there'll be a link in the comments. Okay, moving on. Number six. So while we're on the topic of protection, let's talk about how you can protect your investment because browsing the web and downloading games and even simply opening emails and stuff like that are all fun and games until you run into... Hacker. Hacker. So let me show you a couple of tricks to help you prevent this. Go into your settings, go to security and privacy, tap on where it says app security and enable app protection. If you're worried about security, you should definitely use this one. Now here's another helpful tool to keep yourself safe when connected to public hotspots and any guest networks because those are hunting grounds for hackers. Go to settings, go to security and privacy. Now go to more security settings and here you'll see secure Wi-Fi. This is basically a free VPN from Samsung. You get one gig of data to use for free per month. And at the bottom of this page, you can turn on auto protect. This allows the secure Wi-Fi service to kick in automatically whenever you connect to a public Wi-Fi hotspot. I do recommend you switch this on if you don't have a VPN already. So with this enabled, now you don't have to worry about so this brings me to something everyone should do, but not everybody does. Bring down your quick settings, hit the pen, and on this page you can delete any unnecessary quick settings that you won't ever use. But here are three quick settings that I might suggest you add. The secure Wi-Fi, you should definitely add this to the quick settings menu so you can toggle it manually. Dolby Atmos. And if you care about security and privacy, you can add the camera access quick setting. This gives you the ability to turn off camera access manually. So this could be handy for when you're using an app like TikTok that can access your camera to read your reactions to the videos. Well, I have no evidence to back that up, but I heard that's a thing. So at least now you know how to put a stop to it if you want to. Number nine. So in the previous tip, I did recommend you add Dolby Atmos. Here's why. This slightly changes the EQ on the built-in speakers and it works particularly well for video content. And many people, including myself, believe it makes the phone just generally sound better. So turn on Dolby Atmos, see if you prefer it to the regular audio settings. And if you don't like it for certain types of content, you've got the quick setting now to quickly turn it off. Number 10. Okay, if there's only one thing you do after watching this video, this should be the one. The side key, the power key, by default wakes Bixby. What? And for most people who never use Bixby, this makes about as much sense as a six foot tall Wookiee living on Endor with a bunch of two foot tall Ewoks. That does not make sense. So here's what I recommend you do. Go to settings, advanced features, and go to side button. Here, change this from Bixby to the power menu. Now you can power down and restart your device using the power key, which is kind of what it's really for, in my opinion. And while we're here, this is one of my favorite tips and it's definitely the most handy for me. Change the double tap on the power key to open your Google Wallet. That's assuming that you use the Google Wallet. If you don't, I suggest you test it out. You can download it from the Play Store if you don't already have it. It's honestly so reliable these days. I rarely leave the house with my bank cards anymore. And it even works when your phone is in airplane mode. So you can even pay for stuff when you don't have internet connection. With the Z Fold 6, you have two screens to play with and you should really set these up individually. You can of course mirror the cover screen to the big display, but I don't recommend that. It just gets real messy. So keep in mind that the use case for each screen will be quite different. Just bear that in mind. So step one is to choose the grid size for each screen. To do this, pinch or hold an empty space on the screen, go to your settings, and then here you'll see home screen layout. I always set mine on the cover screen to five by six. That way there's more space for more apps and widgets on each page. If you have slightly wider fingers, you might want to use a smaller grid so that the app icons are a bit bigger. Now let's repeat the same thing on the big screen. Here I set the grid to six by six. You've got a lot of space here, so you might as well use it. Number 13. So the next step is a very obvious one. Download and place all your main and most important apps on your home screen. 
If you're coming over from Apple, the Google Play Store is your replacement for the Apple App Store. This is the official Google one. There are other versions of app stores, for example, the Samsung Galaxy Store. I'm only telling you this just so you know the difference. And I know a bunch of you guys who've been with Samsung and Android devices for many, many years will be like, you don't say. So that is really just for the people who've just jumped over from Apple. Now, when it comes to the general layout, I do suggest you think about this very carefully. You want to set this up in a way that can save time and allow you to be generally more efficient with your screen time whenever you pick up your phone. You don't want to allow the apps to just be scattered all across the pages. So here's my basic formula for Galaxy phones if you're looking for inspiration. Page one I use for apps that I use every day or almost every day. Page two is for productivity tools and money. And then page three is for entertainment and social media. I keep that on the third page so I'm less distracted and this helps to be more productive in general. Now I do know this tip has been quite basic, but it is important. And don't worry, stick around because there will be some more exciting and more valuable tips towards the end, including one very, very important one that you need to know. But for now, here are some more customization tweaks. Okay, so you've got a lot of screen real estate on the open display. And a very good way to use it is to set up some widgets. You can, of course, add any that you want, but here are some that I'm just gonna highlight for you that I think are worth setting up on day one. To set up a widget, pinch the home screen, go to widgets, and then scroll down to the device care widget. This one's really cool because it can be transparent and it can allow you to clear the RAM that's being used in the background if your phone starts to feel a little bit slow. Also, the digital well-being widget is very good and keep an eye on how much you're using your phone and what you're actually using it for having a better understanding can uh, help you be more efficient and the Samsung notes widget is also very useful you already saw how you can use AI to draw things there's a lot more powerful tools baked into this particular app so it is good to have quick access to it and something that's great about these three particular widgets is they can be transparent as well if you jump into the settings there's a little slider here that way they don't ruin your wallpaper quite so much and I also really like this particular clock and something that you should learn is how to create scrollable widget stacks to do this just hold your finger down on an already placed widget and this will then show you the option to create a stack and when you hit the little plus button it will show you all of the widgets that can be placed on top of this widget based on its size and shape. So this is a little extra bonus tip. Whenever you're on a big screen and you go into an app, what you'll see is your docked apps appear at the bottom in a kind of taskbar format. This is very useful to have, and you'll see why I say that in the next tip. But if you find this distracting at any point, here's a little secret way to hide it and recall it back when needed. Hold your finger down on a blank space next to that taskbar, and there we go, it's gone. Now to bring it back, just hold your finger precisely in the same spot and it will reappear. Now it will make sense why I'm showing you this in this next tip. And in this part, I'm gonna show you one of the ultimate productivity hacks that the Fold 6 has to offer. It is, of course, split screening. This is something that iPhone users can only dream of at this point in time. And there are several ways to do this. When you have an open app, you can drag another app up from the dock to immediately start the split screening. Another way is to open backgrounding and hit the app icon and here you'll see the option to split screen. And the third way is you can use the edge panel. This is that little faint line here on the right hand side of the screen. If you drag that out, you can drag an app onto the screen, which will also start split screening. And I will show you some more tricks with the edge panel in a moment. So anyway, as you can see here, I now have three windows in split screen mode running simultaneously. Now, the next thing you need to be aware of when it comes to split screening is this. If you hit the three dots in the center, you can rotate the apps around. And if you hit the star, you can save the specific split screen setup to your taskbar, which is that bar across the bottom of the page. You can also choose to save it to your home screen or to the edge panel. And there's nothing to stop you doing all three of those if you want. So number 16. So this brings me nicely to how to set up the edge panels. So swipe out the edge panel and at the bottom, you'll see this pen. Tap that and now you can edit the apps that are on the edge panel. I suggest you delete everything that's there on day one and just add the ones that make sense to you. And this could be a great way to hide away your social media apps by not having them in plain sight all the time on your home screens. Maybe you'll be less distracted and less likely to go down the social media rabbit hole too often. And also when setting this up, think about what apps you might want to use or need to use in split screen mode. So here's a little bonus tip for the edge panels. So let's add some more usability features to it. Slide the edge panel out again and briefly 
you'll see at the bottom here, the settings for the edge panel. So make sure you tap this before it disappears. Now you'll see all the options for additional edge panels. I like to have the contacts panel here. Also the Samsung clipboard because this keeps several of the previously copied text, not just the last one and also the compass. And the last thing to do here is if you hit the three dots in the top right corner, you can reorder them so that they work for you in your preferred setup. Number 17. So now you're familiar with the edge panel. Here's a very useful feature that it has. When you slide it out at the top here, you'll see the select tool. This can be used in several different ways. For example, if there's an important bit of information that you need to keep top of mind for the day, for example, you can actually select it and pin it to your home screen so that it stays there floating on top of whatever you're doing on your phone until you close it. You can also copy and paste your selected area into a Samsung note or even save it to your gallery. If you do highlight something that it recognizes, for example, times, dates, and addresses, it does understand what it's looking at. So it can actually suggest adding it to your calendar if it's an event invite, for example, and it might even suggest opening in Google Maps. Okay, so you've made it all the way to the end. And of course, as a reward for you, I've saved some bonus quick fire tips to help you level up. Remember the Galaxy Notes drawing trick from the beginning of this video? You might be thinking that's the only way to do it, right? Wrong. Here's another way to use it. Slide out the edge panel again and tap the pen with the squiggly line icon. Once again, you can draw anything you want on the screen and hit generate and there you go. You got a masterpiece. Circle to search is similar to the Smart Select, but it is designed to be more of a research tool. So hold your finger down on the line at the bottom of your screen or the home button. Now you can circle away on anything that's on the screen and it will provide you with the necessary information. So this is a good one. Go to the Play Store and install Google's Gemini. Open it and tap your icon profile in the top right corner. Now go to the settings and then Gemini settings. Here you can switch your voice assistant to Gemini. So whenever you say, hey Google, instead of waking the regular Google assistant, you'll be able to harness the power of Gemini. And one quick way to access this without using your voice is to swipe diagonally up from the bottom right corner of your screen. And this will also wake it. And check this out, if there's anything on screen that you need explained simply, what you can do is swipe up from that corner, tap add to screen, and then type in what you want it to do. This is a super powerful tool. Check this one out. If you're using the Samsung web browser, it does have AI built in. So when you're on a web page, just tap the AI sparkly stars, and here you can summarize or translate the entire page. And when you do summarize, you can use the simplified summary, or you can tap here for a more detailed summary of that website. The Samsung Galaxy Voice Recorder also has AI abilities and it can transcribe audio in many different languages and even identify different speakers. But the greatest thing here is that just like the web browser, it can summarize those recordings. Something you need to know is the summaries are limited to 10 minute recordings. So for longer lectures or podcasts or anything like that, you will need to stop and start it for it to work properly. And check out this absolutely mind blowing AI trick. Go to a photo in your gallery, hit the AI stars, and then here you'll see sketch to image. Now with your drawing skills, make an attempt at drawing what it is you want to add to the image. Once you've done that, hit generate. Honestly, this thing impresses me every time I use it. And here's a quick way to help you identify who's messaging you without even reading the notification. Go to notification pop-up styles within your settings and go to color by keyword. Now I found that names seem to work the best here. You must type exactly how their name appears in your phone book for this to work. Once you've done that, you can choose a custom color for that person. So whenever they message you, you will see the notification in that specific color. And here's the final and most important tip of them all in this video. Your Z Fold 6 probably cost you a small fortune. So the worst thing that can happen is for you to lose it or for it to be taken. So let me introduce you to a particular set of skills. Bring up your app drawer, go to the Samsung folder where all the Samsung apps live. And here you'll see the Find app. Set this up on day one. Now, if your phone is taken, you can track them down with your very particular set of skills like Liam Neeson in that film, Taken. I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. So now you're on your way to becoming a true Samsung Galaxy master. And the next time someone tells you that their iPhone is still better 
you can be like, liar, liar, your pants on fire. And show them some of the stuff from this video. If you want to see even more advanced tips and tricks for the Z Fold 6 from me, just let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about some of the killer Samsung features that are available on all Samsung devices, then check out the thumbnail that's on screen right now. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.